Welcome everyone to the Change Starts Here podcast. I'm your host, Dustin Odom. And in this episode, we're, we dive into a critical aspect of strategic execution. Discipline three of Franklin Covey's four disciplines of execution, keep a compelling scoreboard is my favorite habit to see implemented well in schools. One, I think it's just awesome to see what creativity uh, people have when it comes to creating fun scoreboards from the student level all the way up to the school or district level. And two, I love seeing the impact it has on kids, excitement and confidence it builds in kids, but also the joy it provides teachers and staff members in the journey of educating kids. So if you're familiar with uh, creating a compelling scoreboard, you're going to enjoy this episode. And if you're not, I think you're really going to enjoy this episode. So let's get ready to dive in. The third discipline is all about engagement and motivation. It's built on the premise that people perform best when they know the score, when they can see whether they're winning or losing. In the educational context, that translates to creating a visible, accessible, and understandable scoreboard for all stakeholders involved, be it students, teachers, or administrators, or you could think about it at, you know, the student level, the class level, the grade level, and the school level. So let's start by understanding the essence of this discipline. It's about visibility and engagement. Creating a scoreboard that's not just a tracker of outcomes, but a catalyst for action and motivation. In the realm of education, this means making goals clear, visible, and engaging for everyone involved, from students to the highest levels of administration. I'm often asked, why is a scoreboard so critical? Since we're coming out of March Madness and I used to coach and play basketball, I'm gonna describe it this way. Imagine a basketball game without a scoreboard. Players would be disoriented, unsure of their standing, ultimately less motivated. Similarly, in our schools, without a clear scoreboard, the goals we set risk becoming abstract and the efforts to achieve them directionless. Again, I'll say that without a clear scoreboard, the goals we set risk becoming abstract and the efforts to achieve them directionless. A compelling scoreboard transformed the school's goals from a mere concept into a tangible daily reality for everyone involved. To put this or stretch this coaching analogy a little bit further, uh, just as a coach uses a scoreboard to motivate and inform their team, educational leaders can use it to energize and direct their schools and districts. A scoreboard brings out the natural competitiveness and drive in people turning the journey towards achieving goals into a tangible and interactive experience. So what does an effective scoreboard look like? An effective scoreboard education should embody several key characteristics. It must be simple yet informative, showing at a glance whether we're winning or losing in our pursuit of our educational goals. It should highlight both lead measures, the efforts we control, and lag measures, the outcomes we aim to achieve. For example, if improving reading proficiency is the goal, the scoreboard might track daily reading practice hours, a lead measure, alongside improvements in reading test scores, which is a lag measure. And so when you think about that, a question that keeps coming up is how how do we bring this to life in our schools? For me, I I don't consider myself an incredibly creative person. And so I lean heavily on creative people in my life to help bring that out of me. And so... It starts with co-creation, engaging teachers, engaging students, and engaging parents in designing a scoreboard that ensures it resonates with everyone and addresses the right goals. Whether it's a digital scoreboard or a physical scoreboard in the school hallway, the key is that they should be accessible and frequently updated, reflecting real-time progress and inspiring everyone to push forward. I know I just said, you know, it could be a digital or physical scoreboard. I actually believe in the power and I've seen it in hundreds of schools across North America of a physical scoreboard. Um, I love when I walk into a school and can see scoreboards in a hallway, see scoreboards in a classroom, see scoreboards uh, ultimately at the kid, the kid's desk. And so I would strongly encourage you, yes, you can have a digital scoreboard, but think about physical scoreboard that again, should be accessible. So in the right hallway, frequently updated and reflect real-time progress that pushes everybody forward. When I think about the best examples of this work, one of those examples I'm driven to is East Richland Elementary School that I've talked about before. And what I loved about it was just the create 
creative simplicity of it. I believe they were tracking reading gains. And when you walked in the main hallway, you could see how the, the school was tracking towards their reading goal based on a gumball machine tracker that they had. And so I didn't fully understand at that time, but I could tell that they were how they were winning or losing based on the amount of gumballs were in the machine at the time. Well, then you went down another hallway and you could see grade level gumball machines. Then when you went to a class, they had a gumball machine tracking their progress. And then ultimately when you met with each kid in their folders, they could point to their progress on the gumball machine. And so it's not really about the gumball machine. It was just about the simplicity of being able and the creativity of seeing if you're winning or losing and knowing uh, if we're on track or off track. And what that did is it almost, and I wouldn't say every kid in a thousand person school, but almost every kid I asked could tell me what the gumball machine meant, why that was important and how they were playing a role in those outcomes. So that's something that's really impactful to me. I, I think about another example though, uh, there's an awesome school up in Chicago, uh, Darwin Elementary School that was uh, a D school for a long time and became an A school. And I don't, I don't want us at Franklin Clubby to claim all the success of the impact because the people there are the reason why. However, they utilize the four disciplines of execution, the leader me process to, to get the results they wanted. And I can't remember, this isn't to, to say they didn't have an awesome system, but I can't remember if they had a gumball tracker of sorts. I know they have a tracker. I could tell you what hallway it was in, why it was important, why they chose that hallway. The kids could talk about it, but it wasn't um, uniquely creative. What I noticed though, is that Every kid you talked to knew what the most important goals were. When you walked in a classroom, you may not have seen a clear gumball, but they knew what goals they were going after. And ultimately kids knew exactly where they were going and what they were going after. And so I don't, I, I think it's cute and fun when it's something like a, you know, a rocket ship I've seen recently or a plane or even a car that I was talking to a principal about today. Um, to, it's fun to have some sort of visual like that, but you do not have to have it. It's not, that's not your leadership style. And that wasn't this principal's leadership style in Chicago lead out of integrity and lead with purpose. And this is how you create something that, uh, can change kids' lives. So it's fun, it's creative, but it's certainly not without challenges. Keeping the scoreboard relevant and engaging over time especially in the whirlwind of your daily life as an educator requires constant attention and adaptation. It should evolve with the school's goals and priorities, ensuring it remains a central driving force in the school's culture, which means you've got to make time, I would say weekly to update the scoreboards or at least bi-weekly to update the scoreboards. They've got, it's got to be important. It's got to be something that is driving everyone in the communities to success. So in closing, discipline three, Keep a compelling scoreboard is more than just tracking progress. It's about creating a visual, an interactive narrative of our journey towards educational excellence. It empowers and unites students, teachers, and leaders in a shared mission, making every step towards the goal visible and valued. I'll say that again. It makes every step towards the goal visible and valued. A compelling school board can transform the abstract into tangible, making goals visible and actionable. It's a powerful tool to enhance engagement, foster a competitive spirit, and drive performance in educational settings. I can't recommend uh, an action enough. I've seen, even before I even knew and really understood the four disciplines of execution, seeing the power of just a sticker chart in a high school classroom. Having a scoreboard turned on a game on switch in a way that uh, made my job easier as a teacher and will make your job significantly easier and more fun as a teacher. So I encourage all educational leaders to embrace this discipline, to not only track progress, but to inspire and motivate their teams and students with it. I've seen this simple action in hundreds of schools across North America spark action. And it's just awesome to see kids owning their school goals and taking responsibility of it. I urge all of you to reflect. If you have a scoreboard, reflect on how compelling it is. Uh, think about if it's transforming the execution of your school goals or district. If it's not, how can you make it the cornerstone of your strategic efforts and driving engagement and achievement across the board? 
ultimately, I don't want you to lose sight of one thing. When I think about the schools that are making the biggest impact and the most significant growth, they generally, if I walk into the school and just talk to students, forget the scoreboards for a moment, the students should be able to answer these questions very clearly. What's your goal, both academically and personally? What are your goals? Are you winning or losing? So are you on track or off track? What are the next steps that you need to take to either remain on track or to get back on track? And who are you going to take those steps with? That's it. So again, think about if you can do nothing else. If, can you think about the schools that you're overseeing that you want to see the biggest gains in? Can you walk up to kids and ask them in a way that, you know, kindergartners all the way up to high schoolers where they can articulate what their goals are personally and academically and the academic goals that they're going for, whether it's attendance behavior or actual academics need to be aligned to the school's outcomes. So what's your goal? Are you winning or losing on track or off track? They should be able to tell you quickly or at least point you to a uh, portfolio of sorts that they're tracking. And ultimately, what are the next steps and with who? And why it's important about the next steps is they need to recognize it's okay to be off track or it's okay you know, to recognize that even if you're on track, you can't get lazy and let, let your guard down. So you've got to make sure you stay on track. And the who part is important because, you know, someone, as I've told you plenty of times before, teaching trigonometry, I know there are plenty of folks that were in my classes that didn't love math and that is okay. Or maybe not been the greatest, they weren't the greatest at math and that is okay. Them not being an A student in math does not mean they're not going to be successful in life and they don't have the ability to change the world. And so teaching kids at the earliest ages that you can be super effective in some areas of education and deficient in other areas, and that's an okay thing and that we need to rely on others is so powerful. And so that's why I always add in, what are your next steps and with who? So again, I'm going to say it for the last time. What's your goal? Are you winning or losing? And what are the next steps? And with who are you going to take those steps with? Thank you for joining me today. This was, um, as you can tell, this is a, a passion area of mine and our work. Uh, if you're a subscriber, thank you for subscribing. If you have not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. It's how we continue to grow our impact. And ultimately, please share. Uh, there's someone in your life that needs to hear this or needs some encouragement this time of year. Please share this episode with them. Till next time, keep leading with vision passion and purpose.